Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chronically Iconic podcast. It has been a while and by a while I'm talking like I took like about a month off now. It was very much needed. I was catch up on schoolwork this sort of month and I was sort of just slowing down in life. It was very much needed. Um, but happy December. It is currently the 4th of December, which, um, oh my god, I didn't open my advent calendar for yesterday and today. Oh, I guess we get two chocolates today. Lovely. But today we're going to be talking about how to actually set the vibes for December, how to romanticize little Christmas holiday, our little winter glow up, entering our winter arc era, glowing up before 2025. It's going to be fun. But let me give you a quick little update. So I literally only have like 20 minutes to film today because I am going to a school trip today. I need to get connected tonight because well, it's my connection day, and then I've got to leave straight away to go to watch Wicked with my school for a school trip. So we are rushed today, and I want to get this episode out for you guys, so we don't have loads of time. I'll give you a proper update next week, but let's get straight into today's episode. So today we're going to be talking about how the holidays and winter can feel very overwhelming when living with a chronic illness, but we want to find the joy in these holidays. We want to make the most of it. We want to make it our Pinterest board obviously managing a chronic illness but we still want to make magical and remember moments does that make sense maybe not but it is okay to approach the season differently you know this is your version of festive magic and your version of your glow up you your glow up is you being your best self you know your version of um what is fit you know all that kind of stuff so let's dive straight in because we do not have time to waste so first section we're going to be talking about is how to actually romanticize this Christmas season, this December month. Oh my god, I'm so looking forward to it. As you can see, my room is being decorated. I've got my Christmas bedding up. I've still got loads more to do. I'm really excited. I'm going to make this room literally winter wonderland. But let's focus on creating little moments of magic this December. You know, let go of perfection. Let go of your Pinterest board. Despite the fact that we want our life to be our Pinterest boards, it's not realistic. You know what I mean? We are going to adjust our traditions to our energy levels. And I know I talk a lot about adjusting stuff to do a chronic illness. And I know not everyone's chronic illness affects them the same way they do others. For example, your chronic illness may not take a lot a lot of your energy. Mine can fluctuate. I can't even walk upstairs now without getting breathless. That's embarrassing. So we're all about fitting things to fit us, to fit our schedule, you know. And if you if you don't have a chronic illness and you're just watching along, this is also still really helpful because we need to be able to fit these things into our lives. You know, everyone's life is different. Everyone's life is a different level of busy. Everyone's life's got a different thing going on for them. So despite wanting to do all these perfect Pinterest activities, is that always possible? No. So we are going to fit these things into us. For example, I'm going to be talking about like energy levels. Do you know what I mean? If you still want cookies, but you are too tired to bake, go buy pre-made cookie dough, put them in them, put them in the oven and then decorate them. I've been doing that quite a lot recently because baking generally takes so much time and I'm just so bored after it and I generally can't be bothered. I found in Tesco, there's like pre-made cookie dough for like a pound 30. So whenever I want cookies, I stop by there and I think I've still got cookie dough in the thing I can make cookies with but I literally just stop by Tesco get pre-made cookie dough everyone's happy I can decorate it I can still fulfill the whole fantasy of baking without having to clean up and use up so much energy baking and oh my god like a whole hassle so adjusting little stuff like that you know you want to throw a Christmas party say rather than make all the food go buy some people generally don't care people are just there for a good time do you know what I mean if you're too tired to decorate your room, I clearly wasn't, but if you're too tired to get, decorate your room or decorate your house, you know, just put like, a, I don't know, something cute, something small, like, I don't know, even just fairy lights or a mini Christmas tree or even just a wreath on the front door. And then every time you walk into your house, you're like, oh my God, it's Christmas, isn't this so cute? You know, just making things work for you. So I'm sort of saying like, you don't have to go full on. I clearly like going full on. Um... I've got a tree in my room, I've got lights, I've got icicles, I've got snowflakes on my window next to me. I clearly like going all out and I like that because it makes me happy so I do that but if you can't, if you don't have, if you just generally can't, 
maybe a little thing change your bedding maybe make it christmas themed because i noticed that when i was decorating my room the main thing that brought it to life was the bed because your bed is such a big feature in your room it's just like the main eye point like you walk in the first thing you see is the bed if you make it i don't know add a christmas pillow add a throw blanket you know just something festive something cute just something small as well and then your eyes immediately go towards and it will gravitate and elevate your room so let's talk about the festive vibes for when we have no energy you know sometimes we're all just laying in bed and we generally can't move we've been there all of us and you still want to feel very Christmassy. you still want to feel very oh my god it's winter isn't that so cute without having to go all out listening to I love listening to Christmas music but I was gonna say listening to Christmas music in bed while reading a book or you know maybe watching like some holiday or like Christmas movies in bed on your sofa you know just really enjoying those little moments my favorite Christmas movies are Home Alone I love Home Alone generally the best Christmas movie out there you can't debate me on that I also really like Elf that's quite cute what else what else else? oh my god um then oh my god what's it called the Christmas Chronicles or something that's fun and then I think there's two now I'm trying to think what else but there's loads of Christmas movies out there so if you generally don't want to or can't do like the little decorations but you still want to feel festive movies songs books they are the way to go there's a book i think called the christmas tree farm um written by laurie gilmore i think she's the one who wrote pumpkin spice cafe which i just read a few months ago i need to get my hands on it it looks really cute it's like a christmas book um but there's loads of stories i know there's some by edith blyton i think that's her name I don't really remember but I'm talking just little things I remember when I was younger and I didn't decorate my room at all I would read books I'd still have a stocking so even like a smaller decoration like a stocking would be really cute so I'd um, read books and always watch movies and always listen to Christmas music the minute it turned the first of December Christmas music was just blasting through my ears so I like making my own playlist so I've made a winter playlist which I've also put in the description of this episode so you can have a look and see if you like it and have a little listen along and don't forget to follow my Spotify guys I've also linked my Christmas playlist as well for you guys to listen to as well um but if you want to boost those little things to the extra level you could make a festive drink like try a new coffee recipe i know there's like coffee like christmas flavored ones in starbucks and i know there's like selling some toffee nut thing in tesco i don't really know but it looks cool or like a hot chocolate with candy canes and whipped cream and then you can take fun little photos as well to really look back at that memory later on and be like oh that was so cute i remember doing that i loved doing that you could also do like fun easy um um sensory activities i put down here which oh so like using all your five senses so for example holiday candles christmas candles i've got three in my room as well as some winter spray winter body spray so things to smell christmasy as well because that's really fun despite not being like all decorating that can really romanticize that can really up level sense a big scent wait no that's not right scent is a big sense that we have so to really uplift all the vibes if everything smells Christmassy, if everything smells of cinnamon of gingerbread you're like oh my god that's so nice in it it's like when you walk into a cafe and you can smell all the baked goods you're like oh my god this is so nice i want to stay here this is a cute cafe do you know what i mean maybe you don't but i know what i mean so <laughs> you could also do like little christmas clothing so like um christmas pajamas i've got about two sets you can just get them in primark tk maxx amazon you can literally get them anywhere but they really you know they're just fun do you know what i mean and if you're just right laying in bed with a hot chocolate christmas pajamas reading a christmas book with christmas music in the background can you just imagine how cute that is like you can just i can just envision the picture it's so cute or even using like scented lotion, uh, cream, body gel, shower gel, um, what else is scented? Um, like if you go to Bath and Body Works, I bought a Christmas like shower gel from Bath and Body Works as well as like the same scent in a body spray. So I'd definitely smell like that. Oh my God, it is heavenly. 
I genuinely love it. It's so good. So just little things like that to really elevate the vibes as well. Do you know what I mean? Like you're looking the part, you're smelling the part, you're feeling the part. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, but another way, so one way that you really need to remember if you have a chronic illness is to advocate for yourself this holiday. That means saying no to plans if needed or to ask for help with holiday prep. So I've got a thing coming soon with my friends. I generally don't know. They said it was a Saturday or it was a Sunday. I don't know. But if I do not feel well enough to go that day, I have to remember to not push myself to go because that would probably make me more unwell. If my stomach's really hurting, getting up and going to London and eating food probably isn't the best thing for me. The best thing for me at that time would be to stay in bed and sleep it off. So this is where I'm saying that if needed, you can say no to these plans and look after yourself, put yourself first, remember what you need. Do you really need to go to that ice skating trip or do you need to stay at home and do some stretching to help or do you need to stay at home and have a sleep or if needed, do you need to go to the hospital? don't put plans over your health that's probably one of the worst things you can do because yes you're having fun yes you're creating memories but you can always create memories you can always do those things later on maybe you couldn't go ice skating this week go again next week when we with someone else maybe you know they go again with you or maybe just guys just completely reschedule another thing with that is communication as well talk to these people tell your friends tell your family that actually you can't come today you don't feel well talk to them keep them updated let them know that way they would feel involved as well and not like you're pushing them away because i know sometimes for other people it can feel like that if you don't explain why you're going just say sorry i can't come they may you know be like oh okay um sure but if you say like oh sorry i can't come i'm not feeling very well you know i'm just gonna stay at home and rest they'll be like oh my god no don't worry we'll reschedule it another day i hope you feel better you know just communication as well is really is really important in everyday life and if you need to ask for help with any holiday prep say you want to throw a christmas party but you don't have the energy to do it all by yourself ask someone to come help you ask a friend to come help you ask i don't know your sibling to help you and stuff like that do you know what I mean? Because if you can't do it all by yourself, don't push yourself to the point where you have to, like, you're struggling to do it. Like, I I do this all the time. But I like it, though. I like doing stuff on my own. Um, but sometimes if I can't, I will not ask for help. But I probably should because it means, that, like, after I'd get so exhausted, for example. Like, if I'm cleaning, everyone always offers to help me. But I say no. I don't know why I say no. But by the end of the cleaning session, I'm exhausted. Like, I will be panting and I won't be able to breathe and I'll be dizzy and I'll feel faint. I should have just asked for help. I need to I need to practice what I preach as well. Another thing you can do to help your chronic illness and to make yourself not feel so horrible during these holidays is to schedule some downtime into your calendar or schedule some downtime into your days. It's getting dark very early now. We're moving into winter. It's depressing why am I waking up? It's dark. I mean, it's 4.20 and it's practically pitch black outside. It's depressing. So we need some things to lighten our mood. Because honestly, what is going on? I said in the previous episode, I hate daylight savings. It's not daylight saving. It's the opposite. I hate not having daylight savings. Because if this was the case, if we saw daylight savings, it'd be like 5.20 right now. And I'd be like, mm, okay, that's not too bad. 5.20 for the sun to be dark it's winter but it's four o'clock i wake up at seven o'clock it's gray i go home it's gray every time it's it's always gray and it's really depressing and i completely get where people get seasonal depression from because it's so depressing where's the sun guys why are we not having fun in the sun so by romanticizing your winter i guess it's also a way to overcome this um feeling of sadness and emptiness in the winter so by romanticizing and you know by watching these films and sitting by the fireplace and sitting in fairy lights and having your free time in your calendar to really enjoy christmas activities or just enjoy your own company rather than rushing 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 because if that was the case i'd be in dark right now and it's really 
I find it more tiring to go out in the dark than in the daytime don't ask me why I think it's just the mindset like I'm generally more tired like today I've got my trip I'm going is I'm going there it's gonna be dark I'm gonna come back at midnight it's gonna be more than pitch black it's not fun but I'm gonna have a great time either way we're gonna have we're gonna have fun um but I kind of oh my god I got to wrap up soon I've literally got to go in five minutes I've got people come so let's so let's do a little summary of what I said about romanticizing Christmas so um let go of the perfection we don't need to make our Pinterest board you know um do smaller activities which aren't so high on your like which aren't so taking on your energy you want to bake buy some cookies decorate them buy cookie dough put them in the oven right you're too tired to decorate put a little mini tree somewhere put some fairy lights up um you know you really want to romanticize your winter smell sense use all your senses you see something you like oh my god you feel good you smell the christmas spirit you're like oh my god it's christmas you're wearing the christmas clothes you know you can just imagine it as well um you know make a holiday playlist listen to songs you know that lifts your mood without being too overwhelming okay so let's talk about our winter glow up and our winter arc and how we're going to enter our winter arc so we need to sort of think about winter being a slower season you know but we're not going to be depressed we're not going to look at that in a sad way we are going to think about how this is the perfect time to reset rest and focus on becoming our best selves without so much pressure without the pressure of you know having to be going out all the time because it's something like say for example it's summer going out all the time you know meeting up with people some people can't even meet up anymore because it's dark outside and i completely get that now glow up doesn't mean having a huge transformation transformation i'm not asking you to become a brand new person in different skin glow up means taking smaller steps to help you like your best version of you I'm not talking about drastic changes. I'm not telling you to drop everything in your life and start again. Smaller snap steps make such a big impact. So big, like it w- could genuinely change your life. And for example, like add, if you're looking for smaller things, say again, chronic illness, if you don't have the energy to be going to the gym every day, try to do maybe a yoga session at home for about five minutes then build it up slowly maybe to 10 minutes 15 minutes maybe change yoga to pilates you know you're still getting in a workout without feeling all the pressure of going to the gym every single day and the thing is as well when you're doing these things every day is not building habit you're going to lose the motivation really quickly to build a habit you have to start taking smaller steps for example you want to fo- say you want to focus on your skin right you really want clear skin going into the new year you've already got a good skincare routine maybe add one extra step for the winter like a really hydrating moisturizer or a hydrating mask because this winter is dry um you know there's some the winds blowing in your face it's really absorbing all your moisture so your skin's going to be dry so maybe adding some things or maybe doing eye patches or maybe using a gua sha just adding one thing at a time and then you can build on that so you're doing the gua sha for three two three weeks you can then add the mask once a week you can then um add another step also by this is also really helpful for your skin because it gives it time to get used to this kind of stuff um but you could maybe change a bit your style if you want to glow up you know wear something cute maybe start adding bows into your of course the first thing i say is bows maybe start adding bows into your outfit or you know slowly change your style maybe adding new colors maybe adding less color maybe adding more color you know just sort of slowly slowly you can even do um things like journaling you know maybe at the end of every day write one thing you're grateful for and then take five minutes to do some affirmations and stuff like that so nothing major but they can still have a big impact on your life so once you know you're you've got in mind the tiny manageable goals you want let's reflect and you know reset for 2020 2025 now choose one thing that you want to work on at a time like either sleeping more 
drinking more water, spending more time outside, having a new hobby, you know, really being present. Try one thing and how you're going to be realistic with these goals. You're not going to think of a crazy thing, right? You want you want the one single thing to work on. Maybe this year's your fitness goal. Maybe this year you're going to glow up mentally. Maybe this month you're going to glow up mentally. Next month you're going to glow up physically, you know. Um, you're going to fix your sleep schedule this month then next month you're going to work on finding a new hobby then the month after you're going to work on fixing your skin stuff like that now to really look and to really put these goals into place i recommend doing a vision board i love making a vision board i've been making a vision board for about oh my god nearly three years now and it's actually really helpful it's also really good for manifestation if you guys do that like if you want to manifest anything vision boards are the way to go because you're visualizing your goals you're visualizing what your life looks like you're visualizing what you want in life and you know you're seeing it every day you have something to work towards you have a goal right in front of you that you're looking at that you remember oh yes this is why i'm doing it this is why I'm working so hard, this is why I'm studying so hard, this is why I'm going to the gym every day, because I want to look like that, because I want to do that, because I want this as my job, because I want to get these grades. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about vision boards. I love them. You know, focus on how you want to feel rather than what you want to achieve in a way. I say do both, you know, because you want to achieve it, that means you're going to work harder for it. So on your vision board, put pictures of what you want your life to look like for example i'm just looking at my vision board it's literally in front of me here um i don't have great eyes so i can't really see but i'm looking at the gym so i really want to go to pilates i'm looking at um good grades i'm looking at airplane windows so i want to go traveling i'm looking at the taylor swift eras tour photo i want to go see the taylor swift eras tour and you know it really helps me look at what i want to achieve this year and what I need to work for and I've also got like some quotes on here like um 2024 is my year Mm -hmm. like or 2024 is the year I become a content creator you know stuff like that Mm -hmm. but don't overwork yourself for this glow up you need to rest you know rest is productive and necessary to feel your best rest is necessary in order to glow up if you go to the gym every day you're gonna strain a muscle you're gonna break a ligament tear a ligament you're gonna hurt yourself you can't everything needs to be done in moderation there's a i'm gonna do some classics revision here right so there's a delphic maxim which is i don't i don't know they're like three rules that the greeks follow num the what i'm gonna tell you is nothing in excess And this is how I'm going to achieve my A-star in classics. Nothing in excess. Don't be excessive when going to the gym. You know, don't be excessive and add like 15 new skincare products onto your skin. Slow and steady wins the race. Guys, I'm full of these quotes today. What's going on? Rest is productive. So listen to your body. I balance my stuff with my illness in a way. So for example, this week I've gone to the gym once on Monday, I think maybe I didn't no I didn't because I didn't want to I was tired so I came home and I did some home workouts instead I was thinking about my health if I went to the gym I probably would have been really exhausted because I would have had to get the bus there go to the gym get the bus back and I was like no I'm just tired I want to go home so yeah I've got to wrap up this episode now I do apologize it was really short um but my nurses are coming here soon and I've got to change quickly before they come. So I just want to end with a little encouraging message um, about glowing up. Your glow up, oh, I'm getting a phone call. I just want to end with a really encouraging message about glow up. Your glow up doesn't have to look like anyone else's. It's about finding what works for you and taking it one step at a time because you are not anyone else. You are unique. And please celebrate your small wins in your glow up. You know, it all adds up. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, make sure to follow, like and rate the podcast and share your favourite holiday traditions or ways you want to glow up this winter with me on Instagram at chronicallyiconic.podcast. Don't forget to follow me on all my other socials. I've got YouTube, TikTok, everywhere. They're all in the description of this episode again thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed and i love you guys so much and i'll see you all next week bye